go. So right here, we're at Edit London and we're taking this opportunity to speak to some of our favourite and most influential people in the world of sneakers. Today we welcome Franklin King of Traders. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate being here. Thank you. So today we want to talk about your love for sneakers. We mm -hmm. want to talk about, um, we'll get into some quick fire stuff later. Mm -hmm. But to give people some background that may not know too much about you at the moment, can you tell us a little bit about just generally your kind of journey, not just in the world of sneakers, but also your journey in being um, very entrepreneurial and starting yeah. multiple different businesses? Yeah. Well, I mean, Look, my, I don't know, my sneaker journey started in, in the 80s. Um, my mum loved Boris Becker, she loved tennis. Um, she bought me, like, literally um, all the tennis shoes um, from, like, 85 upwards. My nickname in school was King of Trainers, so that's how the whole nickname came around. Um, and then, even from a young age, I was, I was entrepreneurial. My mum used to buy me <coughs> matchbox cars, match, matchbox cars. And, um, I would literally sell them to the other kids, <laughs> you know, because I had, you know, back in the day it was collectors, limited editions and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 and I would sell them yeah. to the other kids and um, I've always been on, like, trying to kind of make money and better myself and, and things like that. So it's been from an from early, early age. When I moved into the social media realm, I said to myself, how can I become the person I need to your trainers? You know, and then I, I literally would go to events dressed up with a crown and a robe. And then um, people would, people would be like, "Who's that guy?" And I mean, prior to that, I, I set my page up as like a news page, and I was, I was giving news, my opinions on like culture and, and footwear and things like that. And then, and posted some old pictures of me when I was a kid wearing like like heat. And people were like, "Oh my god!" Like you know, I had you know that's just come out now. How did you yeah, have it? Yeah, but then I said, "Yeah, well, so you know, the retro and everything we had back in the the nineties." And, um, and then I thought, okay, how can I kind of set myself apart? Because you have platforms, um, you know, that do news and stuff, but you didn't have like a, a person that's kind of like a figure. And, um, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll go to events with a crown and a robe. And then people, you know, and, and, and literally I was just doing it for the love. Um, and, and kids will come up to me and take pictures and people take pictures of me. And, and I was doing it for like, for that, like that yeah, community yeah, spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, unfortunately, you know, you get hate comes with it as well. So. <laughs> You know, but let's um, go. Let's go back to that period. You spoke about the eighties, and you spoke yeah. about um, <coughs> your mum was great, and she bought you the latest tennis shoes. And you mentioned the Boris Becker at the time, yeah. the famous tennis player. Yeah. Um, things were not as accessible back no. then as they are now. No. So, how did you know about the drops? How did you know what was hot? Jordans yeah. probably came out in yeah. that same era. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, myself and my sister, shout out Jen. She, we would buy things like the Right On magazine. Like this is way before like. It, like social media and stuff like if the internet didn't exist like let's be honest when, when i was getting the internet didn't exist and we'll buy we'll watch a lot of like tv see like an american show see what's on like you know it was back then it was like cosby show a different world and, yeah. and things like that and you see oh, what trains are those and and we would like cut out magazine clips and back in the day there was a shop called olympus sports and that was like the premier trainer store and we'll go there and say oh have you guys got this have you guys got that you know, and then literally we'll be like, oh, what's this tennis player's latest trainer? And, and they were like, oh yeah, we've got it. And, and it was like that. And what back then, you know, I'm not, I wasn't, <laughs> my parents weren't rich. So it was one trainer a year and one shoe a year. But my mum realized from a, a, when I was a, a kid that if she buys me cheap trainers, they're gonna mash up. So the amount of money she'll spend on like five, two trainers for the year, she'll just yeah. buy me one good pair yeah. that's gonna be, you know, gonna last. If we come forward more towards the modern day now, mm. and um, I mentioned at the start of the conversation that we're in East London, which is yes. a hub which is special to you, mm. and, and Box Park just over the corner there. Yeah. I mean, we mentioned about your multiple businesses. Mm -hmm. Are they all around the fashion world and sneakers? No, not all of them. No. So uh, I, you know, I invested um, in a in a CB company called Dream Machine. We have a store, a fran well, it's a franchise, and myself and um, Red Free Two. I mean, my business partner, a friend, um, invested in a, a, a couple of green machine. And the reason why I guess this part of this is special to me, my mum used to work down the road, on commercial road. Yeah. So I was here when I was a kid, before shortage was shortage, like I'll probably be my mum after work, it's me and my mum and mum and stuff. And like I was around here from a very young age and like Petco Lake Market, the leather yeah, shops, yeah, all of that. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, 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 yeah my mum used to come yeah. here and buy like Bashir and Sons, my mum used to know um, um, Bashir's wife and, and it was just like, so I've been around here a long time. So when I kind of 
like open the first shop which was Green Machine and then the second shop which was Retro I um I you know it was kind of full circle particularly a lot of the young black kids that want to aspire to own their own businesses mm. how important is that for oh, you that's, and what you're doing at the moment no that's 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 it's, it's hugely important you know and I thought like when I I, I said I'm going to turn into this personality king of trainers and put a crown on my head and, and wear a robe I wanted to show them that that's possible mm. do you get what I mean like you know it's you know I'm, I'm trying to preach positivity and if people follow me they know that I'm doing money motivations I'm I'm teaching young people about business of, of sneakers just business in general I've done multiple audio books just to help teach them. And for me, it's, it's hugely important. It's hugely important. But very clearly, if you have the intuition, if you have mm -hmm. the drive, mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want. So indeed. what you're doing at the moment is, is yeah. a massive inspiration. Oh, no, kids. indeed. You know, and, and I'm, I'm, look, I'm from Tottenham. It wasn't, it wasn't easy in Tottenham <laughs> back in the 90s. If you've heard the story, they're all true. And I, you know, but, um, you know, I, for me, it was about like trying to do my parents proud. Um, I went to university, I studied visual communication um, design, which is like graphics and advertising um, at Middlesex. And um, after, I always knew I wanted to work for myself, mm -hmm. you know, so straight out of university, I was like, I'm going to just do my own thing. And, and, and my parents were very supportive. They said like, once I've got my degree, I can do my own thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. next month, November will be 19 years self-employed. You mentioned you were from Tottenham. Does that mean that you yeah. support Tottenham? Yeah, yeah. I'm a <laughs> oh, yeah. <okay. laughs> I can see why we're getting along so well. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we want to run through some quick fires for you. Mm -hmm. All sneaker related. Yes. We know you're a sneaker man. At some oh, point, sure. we have to get the drip Indeed. that you popped in here with today. How many sneakers in your collection? Oh, wow. You see, everyone asked me this, right? It was, you know, I gave, I give a lot of pairs away. I'm gonna start there. I give a lot of pairs. This away. is the most politician answer. Yeah, I know. Ever. I give a lot of pairs away. <laughs> come on, come on. Um, it's, 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 I mean, it's, 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 it's compared to big. I'm not. Like, like, it's north of about six hundred pairs. Yeah. Where did you get them? <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> if you were watching, I'm from Tottenham. No, I mean, I have um, you know, okay. I have storage. I have. Um, you know, office. And well, the next question is going to be really difficult for you then. So yeah. I was going to ask you, what are your top two pairs on rotation? That okay, you well, I'm wearing one, which is my um, collaboration with Aless. Uh, so I'm wearing one of them. Um, and yeah, I mean, I know it's really, it's, it's, I wear what's in front of me sometimes. Yeah. Like sometimes I, it depends if I need to go to a particular event and I like, go and pull out something. But I wear, I wear all my, I wear like so many different trainers. So. It could be my, my less I wear the most. Yeah, my yeah, 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 yeah. And you touched on it a minute ago. You had lots of trainers that you loved when you when you were young. Mm. Have you got one pair that stand out in your mind that you were like, I love that pair of trainers? Yeah. Oh man. Um, the one pair, and I don't think it retro that year. It, it came out in like eighty nine, ninety. Um, it's it's called Nike Air TWs. Mm. Yeah, Nike Air TWs. They're like a cross trainer. And it had like a kind of peachy colorway, and it was black and white. Also, oh, I love those trainers. Ooh. If they, if they, if they retro that, look. If anyone from Nike's listening, if you guys retro that, I'm buying ten pairs. <laughs> I'm buying ten. I love those trainers, man. They need to, you know, they they released the, uh, they've retro a couple of cross trainers, but the TW needs yeah, to be retro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We six hundred and ten. Yeah. Well. I ain't gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it though. But um, you touched on it a minute ago um, about some collabs. Yeah. yeah. That you've that you've that you've done over the years. Yeah. And there's one in particular that stands out. You, yeah. you spoke about the trainers already. Indeed. Yeah. You talk to us a little bit about that. No, thank you. So yeah, so I was fortunate enough to have um, a capsule collection. So the whole tracks that I'm wearing, I designed with with a less, um, and it was it was amazing. I mean, they invited us to their. Um, to the Ace Hotel. Um, I have to shout out um, a gentleman called um, Jonathan from um, Gunhole PR. He hit us, hit me up and was like, Frank, we're doing um, uh, a design council where people can design the tank of shoe, which came out at 82. And um, I, I, you know, invited Ace Hotel, like food, free food, drink, everyone. And like, there's lots of people there and everyone was like, kind of like enjoying themselves, speaking to each other and all that. And I was focused. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm designing my own shoe, this is, it's surreal, like. So um, they were like, yeah, just knock yourself out. But then I thought, let me connect it to my history and my mum's history of tennis and, and just bring it full circle. So the actual shoe is, is, is based on Boris Becker's 
uh, when he won the championship in '85, yeah, um, he was wearing a particular like a less um, track top like this, yeah. Um, and what people don't know, he had an a less um, clothing deal and a Puma footwear deal. So one of my first memories of, of the whole sneaker game um, is my mum, my mum buying me, trying to find the actual pumas he was wearing. So I've got a picture of when I'm like five, six years old, wearing a pair of white and red pumas yeah. that she thought were the Bruce Becker ones, you know, that he was wearing. Um, and it's like, it's, when I, it's funny, because when I look at the picture, I'm like, oh, how did you know? Like, <laughs> how, did you, like, how did you do this? So, but she, she just, she just bought, and um, so I, I dedicated the collaboration to her, you know, and she was really the, the kind of inspiration behind everything that's happening now. Wow. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so that's the collection. It, it, we sold in Selfridges. Um, you know, we got a few pairs at my retro store um, in Box Park. That's so. Right, man, we appreciate yeah, having you it. here today. I appreciate you, man. We're um, not we're not finished up just yet, though. Oh, okay. We've got the official sneaker challenge. Oh, wow. You're, okay. the, first, you're the first to do it. So yes. No matter what, you're going to be leaderboard. No okay. one. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I have to stay number one for a long time. Yeah, let's find yeah, out soon. Ready. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. So, welcome back. As mentioned, the wonderful Franklin's about to take part in a sneaker challenge. Basically, Franklin's gonna pick out his three most expensive pairs of trainers. Amongst this wonderful wall of amazing preps, I want you to take a look around the wall. Mm -hmm. Take a step back. Okay. And talk to me. I have all these okay. amazing drops right here. Look, first of all, I'm gonna say all the trainers are fire. I've got quite a few of them on the wall to be fair. <laughs> For investment purposes only. <laughs> Those who follow me know, for investment purposes only, this trainer is a, yeah, it's a special trainer. Man. Trainer number one you picked out is of course the Dior. £8,999.99 sneaker Ooh. number one. That's a strong start to this game. So the next trainer I'm going to go for is, yeah, you know, Knight Virgil Abloh, Ooh. Air Force Ones, RIP Virgil Abloh. All right, let's check it out right now. Sneaker number two, producer, £2,351.99. pence. I love all the trainers here. My favorite, my favorite pairs are the Jordan 4s. But in terms of price, I would say these. These are like the uh, reverse Mocha Lowe's, Travis Scott, uh, Jordan 1 Lowe's. Our final trainer, 1700 75 pounds and 99 pounds, pence. Yeah, whoa. So, Franklin, the king of trainers. Yeah. Let's look at the total. Yeah. For the three trainers that you picked out, 13,127 pounds, 97 cool. pence. So does that mean I get to take them home? <laughs> <laughs> let's see, at the yeah. end of the challenge, at the end of the season, let's see where you end up. Let's see. On the leaderboard. Hopefully I can get home, I can, I can get home, man. Man, we thank you for being here tonight. No, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so Big much for having me. Cool. Thank you.